Hey, what's up and welcome to Lutzi Time. My name is Aaron Lutzi and today I'm gonna to talk to you about shooting with a professional photographer for the first time. And the reason this is so important is that if you do this right and you're great at working with photographers right out of the gate, they're gonna to wanna to work with you more, which means better photos for you, better content. Your name's gonna get brought up when they need to do stories about stuff. And just generally overall, this is a good look to be great at working with photographers. So I'm shooting with my friend Cassie today. It's actually my first time working with her. We've been friends for a long time, but I've got her out into downtown Portland. She's usually in the Alaskan backcountry shooting epic like bears and salmon and all this stuff. And today she's working on a new subject, which is me. So it's our first time shooting together. I wanna make sure I nail this and do everything right. And uh, I'm gonna give you a bit of insight into what I'm thinking as I'm going through this process. And then I'm gonna ask her some questions and get her to share her perspective working with a subject for the first time. Uh, so here we go. So there are a handful of things you can do right out of the gate before you actually even meet up with the photographer. One thing I like to do when I'm going to shoot at a spot with someone, I like to go there ahead of time and just scout everything out. Sometimes it's a place I've been before, sometimes it's a totally new spot. For example, today, totally brand new spot. We're in Portland, Oregon at uh, Lovejoy Plaza. I've actually never ridden here even though I've lived in Portland since 2005 and I'm super excited to ride here no matter what, but I just wanted to come here and check it out. So I showed up a day early. I rode a few spots down here to kind of get a feel for what I wanted to do on the bike and just give her a little bit more insight into the spot itself. The next thing I did, I gave Cassie a call the night before the shoot and I told her a little bit more about the location, what to expect, what's the lighting like, what's the area like, what kind of colors and textures are there, stuff like that. So I could provide her with a little bit of information that, that maybe was more than what she could find on, on Google. So I've shared a couple additional pieces of information. We've talked about our goals for the session. We've kind of gotten over that first like 15 minutes of awkwardness that you would normally have if you met somebody and were working with them by just picking up the phone and having a chat before the whole thing even starts. So now that we're actually on site, there's something I'm gonna do that I think is really important into setting the tone for the whole day. And that's just to do an extended warm up. So stuff that might be a little easy for me to do right out of the gate, but she gets a chance to see some of the nonverbal cues that I give when I ride. For example, before I do a big move, my hopping slows down, my body movement slows substantially, and then it's a big explosive movement. Someone that's never seen me ride before might not pick up on that, but if she sees me warm up and ride for a bit longer, that's gonna make a lot more sense as we go. And not only is she gonna see it, but I'm gonna talk her through some of the more obvious steps in my riding so that she can get instantly comfortable and adjusted to the style of riding that I do. We're also going to go around the spot and kind of pick out some of the main spots that we want to shoot so she can already start thinking about the setups, the lighting, the creative elements that go into each one of the shots. So the more prepared I can get her before she clicks that shutter, the better this whole thing is going to turn out. Now this next element is actually more about the vibe of the session. You have to be ready and willing to do pretty much everything you're gonna throw down a bunch of times over. Every photographer is gonna have a different way about doing it, but I can almost guarantee you it's never a one shot thing. So be ready and willing and excited to do everything that you're doing a handful of times. A, it's gonna give them a chance to see it once and get an idea of what's gonna go on and then give them a chance to have a couple different takes and tries at getting different creative elements out of that specific trick. So just be mentally ready that, you know what, I'm gonna do this more than once. And uh, if, you, if there is something that you can only do one time, definitely let them know, like, I might die on this, just make sure you get it. <laughs> but have that conversation before you do it. Otherwise, they're just gonna assume you can do all these tricks over and over and over. Sick, sick! <laughs> you know, continuing on with the vibe of the session too, think about your attitude, be cognizant of how you're showing up at this thing. You wanna have a good attitude, you wanna keep it light, have fun, pull little pranks, tell jokes, stuff like that. Like, make it fun for everybody involved. It's not just this one-way thing about you as the subject. Super important to keep the vibe just right. Because I'm working with a brand new photographer that I've never shot with before, one thing I really need to think about is they may have a completely different style from everyone else I've ever shot with. And I'm used to shooting with some other photographers and Cassie might be bringing something new to the table here that I haven't even considered. So it's important to keep an open mind to different styles and different ideas that she might have and not just be doing the rinse and repeat on every other photo shoot I've ever done. Now this one might be kind of obvious, but you want to be helpful. You want to make this a good experience for the photographer so that they select you to shoot with you again. 
I can't tell you how many photographers have been in a position to choose who they want to go on a trip or choose who they want to feature on a product or, or a magazine article. And if you had a great experience working together, there's a great chance that photographer is going to choose you. Listen, the most important part about photo shoots, always bring snacks. Like I said before, it's not just this one way street where you get to choose a photographer every time or you're in control. A lot of times the photographers have the ability to plug you into stuff. And if they had a great experience with working with you the first time, great chance they're gonna call you back to do something more again. One post shoot thing that you might think about is using your platform to share that photographer's work. This is something that you wanna make sure that you're totally aligned with the photographer on, make sure that they're cool with you using the photos and all kinds of stuff like that. Definitely need to have a conversation before you do that. But if you can, use your platform to help out that photographer. It goes back to my previous point about making the experience good for them. You know, what's in it for them with this whole thing? They had a great experience on the shoot and you did everything you could to get them additional exposure and share their work out. And maybe they got another job because of that. That's awesome. And the more you can do things like that, just boost that photographer karma as much as you possibly can. Hey there, I'm Cassie and I'm a photographer and photo retoucher and today I'm going to talk about some tips that I have for shooting with a new athlete or a new subject that you've never shot before. I just got back from shooting with Blutzi. Uh, we had a great time. I learned a bunch of cool new things about biking and photographing biking. Definitely a new area for me so I'm really excited to look at some of the content that we got. So tip number one, flexibility. It's really important to maintain flexibility throughout the entire process, you know, between scheduling or weather changes, just to be able to be flexible throughout the whole process will really make things run a lot smoother. Tip number two, you want to assess the situation beforehand. So what that could look like is communicating with the athlete beforehand, really getting to know their sport and talking to them about that defining moment of when they're running their line, what that looks like and how they're gonna lead up to that moment so that you're better prepared for nailing the shot. Tip number three is getting familiar with your equipment beforehand, you know, taking some time before the shoot to really pull out your gear, set it up, um, take some test shots, get it on the computer and make sure everything looks good and that you're familiar with the menu systems and the way to set everything up so that when you get to the shoot, you're not you know, fumbling with gear or trying to learn something while doing the shoot. Tip number four, bring some snacks. You know, food is mood and you wanna look out for your crew and yourself. Um, it's really easy to throw some extra bars or some fruit in your backpack and just have it on standby because you never know the shoot could be moving super fast paced and you don't have a lot of time to stop and eat a meal. So just having that extra snack on hand could really save you. Tip number five, making sure the vibes are high, bringing a lot of positivity to set, um, you know, just making sure that everyone is happy and having a good time. And that is usually a pretty good recipe for success. Something I learned that I definitely took away from this shoot was how to manage your time. Um, you know, we had a short window of time to shoot and it's easy to get hung up on shots. So I noticed that for me, it was really helpful to keep reminding myself once I got the shot to just move on. And once I felt good about it, just, you know, move on to the next location and just be confident in your shots because that can be a big time saver. Hey, thanks for joining us and hopefully you learned something new about your first shoot with a professional photographer. If you like the trials riding that I was doing in this episode, I actually have a full playlist that's trials riding basics and foundational elements that I'll link to here. And then also there's a mountain bike basics, which is rooted in trials technique that I also have a playlist for. So I'll link both those here. Uh, thanks again for watching and if you haven't subscribed, please do and don't forget to click the bell for notifications so you see when the next one comes up next week. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you soon.